Hello everyone and welcome to today's mass work webinar on accelerating electrification with model based design. I am Ali Reza Tashakuri, EV Business Development and Application Manager at Motec, Melbourne, Australia, and I'm going to present Motec products in EV control system design and development. In today's presentation, I'm going to discuss Motec products in EV applications. MOTEC integration tool for simulating, MOTEC proposition to support EV development projects, our target EV markets, and at the end, one of my colleagues demonstrates an electric motor testing using our EV test bench setup in Melbourne. Wide range of MOTEC electronics such as M1 VCUs, PDMs, and displays are suitable for EV applications. Our M1 VCUs and displays have logging capabilities as well. i2 Pro is MOTEC data analysis software to analyze the log data. MOTEC M1 VCUs are Simulink enabled. MOTEC M1 integration tool for use with Simulink enables the integration of a compiled Simulink model into an M1 control unit. This feature provides a streamlined pathway from MATLAB and Simulink control system development to embedded software for an M1 controller. M1 VCUs are also suitable for hybrid applications with the ability to control modern engines, gearboxes, and EV drivetrains at the same time. MOTEC offers both high quality electronics and engineering support for your EV project at the same time. Here I would like to explain more on how MOTEC M1 integration tool for use with Simulink works. After you install our integration tool, MOTEC custom blocks will be available in the Simulink library. You have to use MOTEC.tlc as the system target file in the model configuration setting before developing your control system in Simulink. After compiling your model, you will receive a MOTEC user library file that can be imported to M1 build software to choose the target M1 hardware and assign the physical IOs. After programming the target M1 VCU, then you can use M1 Tune to calibrate input sensors and set the tables and parameters as required. You can also analyze the log data to optimize the system performance using MOTEC i2 Pro data analysis software. This slide is summarizing the steps discussed earlier. As can be seen, you can add a compiled Simulink model to M1 for assigning the physical inputs and outputs. We have multiple built-in classes in M1 to read various sensors that include the required signal conditioning and diagnostics. So this simplifies the Simulink model as you just need to design your core control code in Simulink while all physical inputs and outputs are handled in M1 build environment. After programming M1, you can use M1 Tune, which is a strong and flexible calibration tool with a lot of visualization capabilities for better tuning the developed control system. MOTEC also provides engineering services to EV clients. This includes defining the required drivetrain power and battery energy, recommending suitable high voltage subsystems for the project such as motor, motor inverter, battery pack and so on, design a customized high voltage power distribution unit and provide programming services to design and develop the EV supervisory controller. EV supervisory controller is the master controller in the vehicle that perform three major tasks as shown in the figure. System functional control includes controlling each individual EV driveline subsystem and managing the functional relationships between them. 
High voltage line control and EV drivetrain torque mapping are examples of the system functional control. Electric vehicle operation mode control layer defines the vehicle operation mode according to the driver input. Vehicle operation mode dictates the strategies within the functional control layer. Fault handling strategies are the safety critical functions in the VCUs due to the existence of high voltage and high power battery packs. Diagnostics are done continuously in the background and include checking of all safety critical parameters of the high voltage subsystems. In case of any fault, VCU must implement the predefined fault handling strategies to minimize the associated risks accordingly. MOTEC also offers a master battery management system as shown in the figure. In this topology, battery modules have their own slave boards that measure individual cell voltages, cell temperature, and include cell balancing circuit. M1 collect all this information on canvas and calculate the state of charge, the state of health, and all other required parameters for managing the battery as well as modeling battery thermal characteristics. Our master BMS solution is flexible to be customized for various battery packs and cell chemistries by the customer. This screenshot from M1 Tune software shows the parameters that can be customized by the user for both charge and discharge operation modes of the high voltage battery. While Motorsport represents MoTeC core business, we are looking at low volume electric car production in various industries and applications, including race categories and teams, high performance electric road cars, mining vehicles, heavy duty electric vehicles such as electric trucks and electric buses. We have supplied electronics to multiple EV projects and EV integrators around the world. We have also designed and developed EV drivetrain control solution for various applications. On the right hand side, you see some photos of the electric vehicles around the world that use MoTeC products. Our in-house designed and built EV test bench facilitates to test and validate a full EV solution including various electric drivetrains and high voltage subsystems. We have 400 volt and 700 volt batteries and built a custom high voltage power distribution unit to run two electric motors at the same time. The test bench has designed flexible for installation of various EV drivetrains in a short time for performance validation under load using wheel hub dyno. These are some photos of our EV test bench at Motec Research Center in Melbourne. Now I would like to ask my colleague Mr. Adrian McGregor to show you some of the features that we have in our VCU program and run a test on our current motor setup. Hello everyone, my name is Adrian McGregor, I'm an EV applications engineer at MoTeC Australia. Today I'm going to show you our M1 Tune software. We use this primarily to configure and tune parameters in our M1 control units. So we have here a test bench which has two M1 controllers in it. One is inside our high voltage power distribution unit and the other is acting as a overall vehicle control unit. So we can see here I'm currently connected to our high voltage power distribution unit and we can see a live view of what's actually happening in that device. So we see we have a number of parameters that we can set. 
uh, these are all user configurable and can be changed within the software. We also have this live view of a number of voltage measurements and current measurements in the device. So our PDU has four lines, so two high current and two low current. So if we have a look at our main one, high current line, we can see more parameters uh, specific for this particular line. And you can see within the software, we configure all of these parameters, uh, the inputs and outputs that are used. Again, we have a live view of what's actually occurring uh, in the device. So if I now switch to the VCU, again, this is a live view of the controller on our test bench. It sees quite a large number of parameters, and we can customize this page pretty much however we want to display the things that are, I guess, most important uh, while we're running the test bench. So you can see at the top, we have some values coming from our BMS system. We have a number of values from our PDU, as well as values from our low voltage subsystems. We obviously have a cooling setup and we have a number of parameters from the actual motor controller. We also have a second page here. We typically use this when we're actually running the test bench. So we can see a live view of the torque, the motor speed, and as well as the current. We have down here a number of other parameters that we can view at the same time, including temperatures of the motor and the inverter. One of the other benefits is that we can make changes on the fly. So these tables down here allow us to change the mapping of the torque output or the throttle output, various other things. And we can actually modify these values as we're doing tests and see how they affect uh, the output. So one benefit of the software is that you can customize this however you like. Uh, we can actually add in pretty much any channel that we have available in the device. So we have many hundreds here, and we can add them in if we decide that they're important to see uh, while we're doing those tests. So now that we want to do some testing, we actually have to connect our battery. So we'll turn that on now. And you can see the battery voltage comes up on these live graphs here. The second thing we need to do is actually connect the high voltage to our inverter. And if we come over to this page, we can get an idea of what's happening. Uh, we change to drive mode, and the VCU sends a command to the PDU in order to turn on the line. And you can see that's now connected, uh, and that there's no faults. So we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, the inverter now has power and we can test the motor. So now we're going to run the motor and we'll just increase the accelerator pedal here and allow the motor to speed up. You can see it's starting to speed up here. Uh, we have the dyno set to 1000 RPM. We'll just bring it up to that level. And you can see here, the, there's a bit of a dip here as the dyno uh, catches the motor and we get to a bit of a steady state. Once we're happy that the dyno is, uh, is holding it in that position, we can then ramp in the torque with more accelerator pedal. So in this test, we have the pedal mapped pretty linearly to the torque request. Uh, we can change this to pretty much however we want. Um, and we'll just bring this up to, say, 180 newton meters. And then just ease off the pedal and let the motor come down to a stop. So, one of the benefits of this software is that we can actually pause the live data stream and go back and have a look at the test that we've just done. So here I can zoom out 
and we can see our test run here. So very quickly we can see we've increased our pedal and our RPMs come up to our 1000 RPM mark and we've ramped in the torque and then stopped here. So the biggest benefit of this is that we can run a test, pause the data, go back and very quickly analyse what just happened and then if we need to make some changes and then run another test, pause the data, go back and analyse, repeat. So it makes it very, very powerful being able to very quickly make changes and quickly analyse how those changes have actually affected the performance. So we can see here, if we have a look down here, this is the, the pedal position. So I've just brought in a little bit of pedal and you can see the RPM increases quite slowly. I've brought it up slowly to this point. And when we get to that 1000 RPM mark, the dyno starts ramping in the load to try and hold it at that position. So after a small while, we know that it now has control. And we then add more accelerator pedal, and therefore the uh, torque ramps up. And obviously, we're holding the, the system at 100 RPM with the dyno, and so it's obviously increasing the load as our torque increases here. So we get to about 180 newton meters, and then we've just eased it off and slowed down. Now you can see that I have these two sets of graphs here. This curse is linked between them, so wherever I position it, these values uh, correspond to the same point in time. So we can see when we get to our peak here, you know, we're looking at about 85 amps from our battery. We're looking at about 300 amps on the AC side of the inverter. And we'll got battery voltage here as well, we got down to about 295. So of course we can also see all of the other parameters as well, and we're also not limited to what's on the screen. Uh, every single channel available within the unit uh, can be added or removed from here. So if there's another channel that we weren't viewing that we want to analyze as well, we can simply add that and also get that data from that run. So in addition to this, we can also save this logging on the device. So if we're not plugged in with a laptop and the controller is in a vehicle actually driving, we can log this data and then download it later. Uh, we can then do our analysis uh, afterwards. So these things are very important for development work, being able to very quickly analyze all of this information uh, and make small changes and see how they affect the system uh, greatly increases the speed of development. Well, thank you all for joining us today. I would like to thank Adrian for the EV test bench demonstration. And thank you all for attending this webinar. Please post your questions in the Q&A panel.